Tom, would you like to do a roll call, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. District one. Here. District three. Here. Come here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Our next up on the agenda is review and approval of the agenda. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would like to add um, Manoman Boys and Girls and Callaway Boys and Girls Clubs for discussion. Mr. Chair? Yes. Also like to add under new business, the Elders Commission election and budget. I would also like to add um, compliance assistance from Lincoln for my section. Okay, motion to approve the agenda. I'm sorry, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that council is aware of the late addition to the signatory request yesterday for the letter on the ICDBG grant. But that, that was added to the, um, that was sent around yesterday, it was added to the consent agenda um, from um, from finance. And it's just a letter to, um, support letter to send out um, on, the, uh, on the grant. Okay, then, uh, what, what about the um, kitchen facilities use agreement? Add that to the consent agenda too? Yes, uh, that's what We'll add that to the consent agenda too, so. All right, motion to approve the agenda. Motion, Chair. Motion by Raymond. Second. Second, Mr. Second by Addy. All in favor? <coughs> Motion carries. Thank you. Miigwech. We have no meeting minutes this week. Uh, next up are reports from the officers and I'll go first. You know, as chairman, you know, I, you know, one of the good things that happened last month is that I, I feel is like a really powerful thing is our PUC was finally passed, our ordinance, and you know, I know that we have some council members and you know staff heading up to um, North Dakota here that, this today and tomorrow and you know, getting a look at uh, what what they're doing up in, in that area. With energy and and also utilizing their 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 body of the commission to regulate and to how they how they help their nation with the resources and and just in general a, a good concept on, on how the public utility commission is uh, is going to work. So we're hoping that we can you know get our get our commission organized. I know talking to uh, uh, Mindy here last week, and I know that those. Uh, those uh, applications, that description to apply for the PUC Commission will be out here very soon. So look look for that out there. If you're interested in being a, a PUC member, make sure that you put an application in. So I know there, uh, the JD, or uh, I shouldn't say JD, it's like a description for the Public Utility Commissioner, so, and that'll be coming out soon. So, and that's one thing I'm very excited about is, so. And also I wanted to talk about the, you know, the cleanup, you know, I know we're going to be doing community cleanup here very soon and, you know, driving around White Earth and, you know, looking at our roads and looking at what we, what we need to do. And, you know, I know that, you know, from, from, from my aspect is, you know, cleanup is important for all of us. And, you know, I know that I support and one thing I, I'm, I'm going to reach out to is talk to day labor about pitching in and helping and utilizing our, our day labor to, to help clean up our roads and to, you know, help the elders, especially the elders out here that that are in need of moving some of their their older discarded stuff from from maybe their porch area down down to the road, so we can get assistance for our elders to help them get ready for community cleanup too. So that's one thing that I think council, all of us, are in favor of helping our elders with that cleanup. And you know, of course, but the ditches around the elders' houses is important, and just keeping our 
our, our Mother Earth very clean and healthy, so as healthy as we can, so as, as a nation. So that's one thing that I'm gonna kind of talk to uh, Sandy St. Clair, and, and Mike's here too, so Mike Michael Thompson. And so we'll get that, we'll get that going and, and look at how we can um, assist as, as, as a council with that too, so. And also one of the other things I was on, I was out in, I was out in Anaheim here a couple of weeks ago for the National Indian Gaming Association annual conference and you know that went really well you know networking and you know talking to other nations and you know and looking at all the different uh, all the different uh, gaming equipment and you know and the businesses out there and talking to some of our vendors that work here in our casino and you know one of the things that you know that I had a good demonstration on was uh, was the cash app for for the machine so that's coming around the corner and that was very interesting and of course, you know, through legislation, we're still advocating for sports bet, but, you know, I think the legislation right now is kind of, we're kind of at a, a standstill right now. We're not sure if we're gonna get sports bet through, through this year, so through legislation. But I know I know that we're being updated. I know we have a meeting or a call tomorrow with, with MIGA, which is the Minnesota Indian Gaming Association, and I'll be on that call tomorrow, so. And hopefully I'll have another update for you in the next, next meeting that we have and try to, um, you know, so that's, that'll be one more part of our, our gaming and it'll be a new compact if, if that does go through. So, but optimism is there and hopefully that, you know, that the 11 tribes of Minnesota can, can come to agreement with that. So, other than that, I, I think I'm, I'm done. And I'll let Alan uh, do a little update. So I want to say big wish and, Thank you for coming today and I appreciate it. And it's important that I see my elders and see everyone here in the meeting, so thank you. Bill Michael. Yeah, I'm the Mr. Chair. Um, yeah, I do want to thank uh, the RBC for um, for the uh, city guide letter here from one of our community councils. I've, I have been contacted by several individuals thanking the RBC for supporting our communities on uh, the Easter holiday weekend there. Um, something that uh, a lot of our little kids feel very special about and our families feel special about and I'm um, very glad to see that uh, the people enjoy that. Also, I'd like to update on the, um, the Enterprise Board. Uh, they are starting uh, to uh, uh, start the process for their uh, quarterly budget um, and they are gonna be started to report that on the on a quarterly basis and so that uh, is quarter end then at the end of april here so uh you get, the rbc can expect to see that um uh, at the month end of, the end of may here uh, so that that report will be ready also i was notified by the tribal college i think they're doing their audits right now um and so they're going through that process and so um we'll work with them and uh, we'll report back any findings or what's going on and so um, that being said i um, also want to make uh, folks aware that uh, the chairman is uh, talking about the elder commission uh, as Lori was speaking about um, there are uh, a notice went out uh, for those elders that are interested in serving on the commission uh, please, uh, please consider serving on that it's really important um, i think it's going to help uh, um, streamline a lot of the programs and services that the tribe has. I think it's gonna be elder led and elder driven. So I look forward to seeing a lot of the work that they do in the future. Also uh, today at uh, lunch, there's going to be a ballot run um, for those folks that are gonna be sticking around for the order on the ballot, the general election. Um, also, there is a cannabis, uh, I see it's also on the agenda here today, the Cannabis Control Board, uh, that's working with Bobby Kwan and uh, They're doing a lot of work over there. Uh, I know they're gonna be reporting that. And, uh, so they're working on our medical cannabis. Um, also, I, I know that a lot of folks uh, know this, but for those folks that are maybe watching on YouTube back home, um, the powwow season is upon us. I often, my office often receives a lot of calls. Um, people wanting to reserve rooms at the casino for the June powwow for our annual celebration. Um, 
A lot of those rooms are probably reserved by now, but if you haven't done so, please reserve them early uh, so that you can make sure that you have a place to stay when you come here. So, uh, that being said, Mr. Chair, um, followed by Mr. One. Mr. Chair, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'd just like to remind everybody that our call is coming up in Rice Lake on, uh, I believe it's the end of this month. And I'd also like to say a good to the Waiters Housing and all the departments that came for great cleanup. They do a very good job and we're very pleased with what, how they do things. And uh, on Sunday day, we were invited to St. Paul for the Walter Mondale Memorial, which was pretty exciting to be at. I uh, met a lot of different people there. Plus, even uh, President Biden showed up, so that was quite a deal. And also, we got a uh, uh, bag and polo on Friday at 1 o'clock at the school. And that's something we've been working on for years because back to school is very, uh, I hate to say it, but, uh, or I won't say it, but I, I know we, we finally got a power through them and uh, I'm very excited for that. So if anybody wants to show up for that, I would appreciate that and our own power. But with that, I say the glitch to the chair and I'll turn over to Mr. Q. Thank you, Ray. Sorry about that. Bonjour, everybody. Um, I also had a busy month. Um, I have a lot of members that reach out to me, and I do try to get back to each and every one of you, but, it, you know, sometimes I miss a few, but, like, you can always um, call my assistant, too. She texts me or whatever to get things going. Um, I want to say chibi Gwich to everybody that's here, especially our elders. Um, community yeah. cleanup um, will be uh, May 13th and 14th for Elbow Lake, yeah. uh, May 20th and 21st for Pine Point, and June 3rd and June 4th for White Earth. And I do try to get out in the communities myself to help pick, pick up the communities and whatever. Um, I'm hoping to work with the community councils to get lunches for, you know, serve for all of our people that are out there assisting. Um, I love getting out there and I just don't like snakes, but <laughs> I, I barely ever run into them, but I do get out there hands on and I love it. Um, community meetings, I'm setting them up in my district. Um, Pine Point will be the 18th of this month, May. White Earth will be the 19th, Elbow Lake will be the 24th, and Callaway will be the 25th. I am asking for all them watching too that um, if Ogama can join our White Earth meeting, that would be great. Um, the reason I'm doing this is that I want to get the community's involvement. I want to hear what you guys want in the communities. Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to be making decisions on your behalf. I want you guys hands on in there telling me what you want. I have requested that Curtis and Lori start um, looking at a um, job description for a planner. I think we really need a planner that can get out there hands on with our communities too. And you know, once we can get, get that running, I think, you know, that way our communities can strive because it'll be your ideas, not mine. So that's, you know, one big thing I'm working on right now. Um, our Boys and Girls Club has been, you know, at the front line. Um, Callaway's is really bad. Elbow Lake don't even have one. So um, I'm pushing for that also. Um, I know we have funding for it. So, you know, to me, I think, you know, Elbow Lake also needs a new um, community building out there. At ENP Kitchen, I mean, it, that, their building is so old. And I know other communities are the same way, but you know, Elbow Lake is, um, quite often forgotten, just like Pine Point is. And you know, and Callaway too, and um, I know Callaway's Boys and Girls Club just probably needs to be for right now. You know, why put a Band-Aid on something and then, you know, be trying to fix it again the next year? 
I don't like that, but you know, that's what I'm looking at is possibly old barn buildings or pole buildings. Um, I looked them up, they can last anywhere from 40 to 100 years. We can, you know, design them the way we want. If we need the offices, if we need, you know, a basketball, whatever, they can be designed to our specifications and they're faster to the build, they're cheaper. And I think, you know, that's something that we need to start looking into. And I know a lot of our members are knowledgeable on building full barn, you know, it don't sound like, it don't sound pretty, but it's a fast solution to our problems. And, you know, that's one thing that I, I keep pushing. Um, that way it ain't taking us two to three years to build, you know, a building. We need them now in each community. And that's what I, I wanna push for. Um, I also attended the um, you know, gaming out in um, LA. It was interesting. I attended a, a couple of the programs. One of them was on missing and murdered. And I think, you know, why there should be, we should be working on with the national because I still have a cousin out there that's missing from Duluth. Oh, I got it. And, you know, um, when can we ever bring her home? When can we, you know, have that closure? Um, we got young young women and boys missing from Bemidji, you know? I mean, all around us. So I think we should start like a little coalition and get all our members that are missing and, you know, let's, let's do something about that. Um, another thing I attended was on the ARPA. Um, one of our lawyers were, uh, or one of our lawyers, one of the panelists was, was talking and she said, don't rush. You got till 2024. She said, there's other grants up, there's other, there's gonna be other monies coming down. You know, you need to look at the big picture, but just don't rush into, you know, giving all that money out right away because that's until 2024. She said there's also low interest loans out there at 2%. Some of them are um, forgivable after so many years. She said our tribes need to start looking into things like that. And it made a lot of sense to me. And, you know, so that's something, you know, that maybe we can sit and talk to. But I'm really hoping to get a planner on board because we need it. I mean, it's time we move forward, you know. And there's some decisions that are going to come out today that, you know, I don't know. I know that some want to wait for new council to come in, but we can't just stay in a standstill. We have to move forward. You know, it's about time. And for me, our, pe our members are who matter. And, you know, that's all that matters to me. So, Chimi Witch. Sarah, what time are those meetings? Five to seven. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and they'll be at the community community buildings. Correct. All right. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next up on the agenda is the elders. Most ready. <laughs> thank you, Mike. Um, good morning, everybody. We want, um, first of all, we have a lot of thank yous. Thank you to Eugene Summers for getting the grant from the Landon Foundation, and he got us some laptops. That was really nice. The only thing we have to do now is find somebody to teach us how to use them. <laughs> Um, congregate building, the roof is done, and we want to thank the council for getting that done finally. It's been a long time, but it's achieved, so we do appreciate those things. The tickets for shows, they're very important for our elders to, to start getting them out again, and um, we received some tickets last week, so those were used, and we thank you, Mike, for those. And thank Annie for getting some to us. Um, we had our first meeting, or not our first meeting, second meeting, out at Elbow Lake. The Elder, Elbow Lake Nutrition Center and um, it went really well. We had well over a few people out there. So it was
was a good meeting. We had covered a lot of topics. Thank you for all those who attended. We got a, several of our questions answered. And, you know, we're also moving forward constantly. We have to, we're getting older. <laughs> We don't want to lose, you know, a lot of our elders that are having health issues. And, and um, that, again, is one of our biggest concerns is the health center at White Earth. There's concerns. We lost another provider that left the facility and went, went somewhere else. It's one of ours right from Whiter, the physician assistant that wanted to come back and work, but you know, because of concerns at White Earth, the person chose to leave. So this is a constant problem down there and we need to get whatever we have to going because our people are are not being treated right. Um, I want to commend the elder, or Kat Thompson, with the elder nutrition sites. She has been making improvements there, and they're really looking nice, welcoming, um, homey-like. So, you know, if, if some of you would should visit those centers, they're really looking better now. They were kind of drab before. So... Now they're light and airy. It's it's a lot better up there. So, and there and we we're at the Elbow Lake, uh, they also fixed their. You know, be, it's it's in bad shape, like Annie said, but they do what they can. And the other part of that is for our next meeting, which was scheduled for. Nate Tawash on June 7th, I believe. Um, it has to be changed and held at Elbow Lake because the site at Nate Tawash will be closed. They're remodeling. So, you know, um, keep that in your notes that there's a change and we'll be out at Elbow Lake again. <coughs> I think with that was our a lot of our thank yous. Um, whatever happened to the that trip we were supposed to take to NDSU to visit um, with I I forget what kind of program it was now. But if you look back in the minutes, there was supposed to be a bus arranged and then we were going to take a trip over there to visit with them uh, council and those interested you remember that laurie yeah but it was with dr warren out of yeah. uh, university yeah. of minnesota we'll get that coordinated for you yeah. <laughs> oh, i'll do it right now right now right. <laughs> um tito excuse me um what what time does your meeting start in elbow lake nine it starts, no, we're uh, having lunch first. Oh, so I will go back to the regular right after lunch. Be there around 11. Yeah. Okay. They serve at 11.30, so be there by then. Okay, the machines which are here, the monies that go for um, elders and youth, there's two machines. Now, we're requiring a lot of programs to be... Excuse me, sorry, Tito. Just a side update. There were some, some uh, issues or concerns um, regarding that visit at uh, UN, with Dr. Warren, so we're going to hold off right now for that. Okay, hey, much. The, the original reason for going over to meet with them would be if White Earth was going to use five million for a health fund for an endowment there. Right. And there's some issues with that endowment that we're trying to work through for example. But it's in the making, yes. yes. Okay. All right. Um, 
I, I was talking about the elder machines. There's two. Now, we're asking a lot of programs for elders with those monies out of it. Um, we want to make sure that there's going to be machines that can meet our needs. So I, I need to have an answer on that because just those two in their Cadillac Jack machines. So a lot of people don't play them because they can't use their card in them. So, you know, think about that and maybe we could get another one. Maybe one of the uh, machines that are being played, some other machine anyway. And then that way we can, we still encourage people to use the machines, but again, when they can't use their card for points, you know, yeah, they really don't want to play it that much. So that can you sense. check into that? He's the one with the gals. I think, you know, I think that, that might be something that can be done because I think we have to do that for the youth too. Yeah, you know, both I mean, issues. they're yeah. both combined and then the monies are, are split. So if we can have a different machine and encourage more people to play them, that would, that would be helpful. Um, do they need to be in that one spot in the back, back there in the back room? Like, it's like a back room. Yeah. More identified more, because they're not even marked back there. We, we need a little bitty tiny thing on the machine. And so I even had to tell one of the workers at, that work at the, give up, like on Elder Day, she asked me where the machines were. So I had to tell her. Now, you know, too, that you can, as an elder commission, like the bars that do have the machines in, or the bars or stores or whatever, you can ask them for a donation out of their portion that's up here. So, I mean, that's something to think about, too, because they can donate to, you know, certain things, so. But we, we again, they're not, they, they don't, want to play them up here because they can't use their card. So we, we just need... Just this, yeah, okay. Okay? Your Why first card, because you need to get it Maybe we need to get it out. They, they, they use their card to earn points. Yeah. And they can eat, have a meal like off from them if they earn enough stores. or whatever. So you can't use your... I have a question, Keto. Yeah. You know, because I've, I've asked a number of times where that money is dispersed from those slot machines, and I've never gotten an answer because well, I don't know of any elders that have benefited from it. Some of the programs that go to, to the elders, are monies are taken out of that. So I, I don't want, you know, it, the monies to not be there. So when we do ask for our needs, that they can be met then. But I'd like to know how, how they have been dispersed, because I never heard of anybody who's ever answered yeah. me how it's been dispersed, and we've had it for a long time. I know. I, I have no idea. We've also asked that. It was reported in February at the treasurer's report, the status of those funds. Because you had a, re a request for information on where those funds were, or what's the balance, and where they're being expended on. So there was, it was included in the report. Glory. So what I, what I can do is have Nick reach out to you. Okay. And he can get you a breakdown of but, where it's at right, right. As yeah, of today, because yeah. we didn't know what that breakdown was or anything, and and we also need to. Again, have you consider other machines rather than those Cadillac Jack ones? And and then a place that can be identified a little better. Okay, um, Veronica, newcomer is going to be here. Where is she? 
Well, so, you, do you know Tara had a, her hand raised? And oh, I'm sorry, her Tara. Can we, we'd also like to request that be emailed to us. That, uh, money? Money that are on the youth and elders? We've been asking, we had it in writing, so. That's, I don't know where to find them. No, no I think that's why we included it, because there was a request. Okay, so both of us can have that information. Okay, um, Veronica Newcomer is going to talk about the Elder Commission, I understand. Yep, she'll be in here later today on her new business. Okay. And she will also can explain the difference between the Elder Commission and the Elder Council. <coughs> I want to get those confused. Housing. Well, we still have a lot of housing requests, issues. Uh, we brought it up at our meeting yesterday, and we never get through to Dennis, Chair. We, we call to the receptionist up there and they will don't ever get our messages to Dennis. So there is a problem there. Hey, I'll have Ray work on that, right? But we have, you know, so many concerns with housing again that we were for, are making the referrals out for the repairs and for those that million dollars set aside so they can apply. And with with those monies, there's not supposed to be an income thing set on there. So we encourage them to apply for that. But like I said, we're having problems connecting with Dennis. Well, I know they were gonna go by a point system. Yeah. And I don't know what that point system is because I don't want to pick or choose and I don't know if the rest of the council wants to pick or choose because, you know, I'm not one to pick and choose. So they're going to go by a point system and I know he's got a pile of apps that have come in and he's been, they've been sorting them by districts because we each get how many? 12, 12 and 11, I think. Yeah. So, or some number like that. Yeah. So I know they were working on them, but I just haven't got the update yet. And I think they just had a house, but I don't know if they talked about that. I didn't get to sit in on the whole meeting. I but I know they're going to be moving forward with some roofs and some other repairs. And um, I do have some requests for my district, too, that I need to talk, talk to them about, but I just haven't had time. Um, I'm going to probably do that today because I just got him this week. And then um, also, um, I know that they're busy with cleanup right now. You know, they're trying to do that. Um, but I don't know. You know, that's, I don't know. Because even when I call up there, they ask who, who this is. You know, get his voicemail set up so we can leave a message. You know? Yeah, something. Because yeah. we just are not getting through there. But there's so many that... <laughs> And, and just an example, Sam has been on the list for eight years, and he hasn't had any help for housing. Okay, um, you talked about, you know, the cleanup and all that. As elders, we're concerned about our environment, too. But we're, we're not encouraging um, uh, separate glass, uh, plastic, we have bins for all that stuff, cardboard. You know, we need to encourage people to use those places in, in a proper way, too. We don't want them to bring their garbage down there and just throw it. But, but there are bins for glass, plastic cans, and cardboard in each community. And we should be using that. I, I do... Um, and we probably have that much garbage every month they pick up every week, I'm sorry. But, you know, if you, if you just encourage that somehow in, in the paper or whatever. Thank you. The sewing facility that some of the elders want to get busy with again, 
We finally got a new door put in there. Thank you for that. Um, we're also, they're supposed to be looking into, um, Annie was gonna check on that for me, or Kat, I'm sorry. Um, getting security down there. If they could connect up, uh, Bernie was gonna check and see if they could connect up with the other building there. With some um, security lights and stuff around there. Because we did get broke into before and everything was taken out of there. At least the stuff that could be sold. So we kind of have to start <coughs> over again. But that's an important factor because we were trying and did have some um, lessons in there that we would work with the youth or others that wanted to learn how to make star quilts or other kinds of um, regalia, ever. So if we could, the windows too, we, we wonder if we can get the screen secure bars like on them because, again, security, it just, yeah. And then um, up at the powwow, we need a, the booth that we always have for elders because we will be having a raffle and we'll be selling some stuff down there. Oh, well, if we can have a booth again. And anybody else here have anything else? Or any questions from anybody? Can you get in all of the laptops? I know we had talked about having a meeting set up, but I was wondering if you got in the rest of the laptops. We got some. They're still. Were they? There were some were given out yesterday. I did save the three for the people. <coughs> okay. That are council members too, and. Yes. Okay, so do you need any help getting those distributed or? Mm -hmm. No, if you have a, a name or. Okay, because that was yeah. that was just one of our concerns is making sure that, that we had a, a, some of the laptops come to our community too. Yeah, so. and I know we did send out some to those people you mentioned. And then there's a couple others that were from that area that were given to two. And we do have a few more, so you have people that. I think maybe um, Bryce Lake might need some as well. Well, give me a list. So, yeah, I did acknowledge the ones you yeah, because Karen was. Yeah, it's just, I mean, to make it fair, because yeah. the, the thing is, is we don't, would like to see more participation from, from our community involved. Yeah. And, and, that, and we, you know, we didn't distribute them. Um, Eugene did out there in his assistant. So people that came to the meeting from whatever area, they received one. Oh, and the meeting's on the list, you're supposed to get one. Okay. Hold <coughs> on. Um, I could answer that question a little bit. I asked them yesterday um, at the meeting, they had, I think, two leftovers. I know they had more there yesterday than they gave out. And I asked them if people needed them, how they could get them. And you can check with them at the, they got them at the RTC too, you can pick them up there. Huge. Yep, RTC, being office, but I think it's your own. Were so we ready? But, they, but we didn't give them out. We, we just, you know, they were given out at the meeting, so. And, and they were here to elders, so. Well, and I think, yeah, that's that's kind of one of the things, but I just know, like, it would be nice for us to see more of our 
our elders participating. And I would hope, I was hoping, that with our meeting being at Natawas, unfortunately, again, we can't have it there because of the building being remodeled. So if you can encourage the people from Elbow Lake, I mean, to be out to Elbow Lake, we can ask Eugene to save some for out there and distribute. And then the ones from Monoman that we... Yeah, if they we, come to the meeting. Okay. Because I know we talked about a, a family, too, that would like to participate, but yeah, that mobility yeah. is a huge issue. And we've, I think he gave out some that were. The only thing is, see, he's given them out so they sign. And he can, he's going to send me a list of the ones that received one so far. And how many are left. I, I don't have that list today. So the other thing, too, that um, the Native Wash Community Council talked about is, remember, we had kind of briefly discussed and mentioned about getting somebody, um, contracting with somebody from IT, and then we would go out to the different sites to help with that. Is that something that um, you guys would still be interested in? We, we accept help from anything <laughs> because we're not very smart on those. And that's why, because we thought, like, maybe not just the, the laptops, but, like, if anybody had any questions with their cellular phones, yes, you know, yes, smartphones, yes. just oh, somebody God. to, like, kind of quick, you know. <laughs> Other than turn it on and <laughs> talk into it, yeah. Because okay. There's a lot of things. That, technology is not our, our gift right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we were thank you. Bored before that. <laughs> I have one hard time. I gotta ask the ears, and they don't help me. Friends can take take you through that, but we can't. So we appreciate the offer, and we yes, we'll meet with you and maybe set up what we can. Once we get those all distributed, Adam, someone to come out and help us. So I'm I'm done. I want to encourage all the Natawash people that you know, didn't get one to come out. I don't know how many are left, like I said, but our next meeting is June 7th at uh, Elbow Lake. And unfortunately, again, we weren't able to have the meeting there at Natawas. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could um, add a couple things. Yes. I just forgot to mention we have the ICWA meeting tonight um, at 5 to 7 here at the Shooting Star. It's gonna, um, it's not focused on healing. No ICWA staff will be there at this time, um, but we will continue the meeting <coughs> and go forward, and they will attend the other meetings. Um, I really um, encourage all to be there so that we can try and um, get ICWA back to where it's supposed to be. And that's, you know, unification. And also, you know, on my community meetings, I wanna call all programs to come out and set up their booths, because a lot of our people don't know what our some of our programs do. So, you know, these community meetings that I'm holding will be a, a good thing for our programs also to get out, get your information out there on what you do and, you know, who to contact and, so please have your programs there with a little table and, you know, let's get our members up to par here. Miigwech. Well, thank you, Tito and the elders, you know, for your update. And um, next up on the agenda is White Earth Housing. I don't know if Dennis dropped off a report or not. Heard. Hmm? Heard. No. Do we have a report from housing? Oh, no, sorry. Um, Dan wasn't able to make it today. <clears throat> okay, thank you. And next up is the uh, White Earth Indian Health Service. I do have a, a, a paper update, and it's just, she talks about the, the field uh, clinic openings. You know, they opened up Made Wash on April 23rd. Pine Point opens on June 14th. 
Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, IHS is here. Okay. All right. I'm sorry, guys. You guys want to hear up here? I need the microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so uh, Maria is unable to attend today, so I'm I'll be uh, sharing uh, the updates. My name is Leanne Thorson. Uh, my name is Leanne Thorson. Um, I've been with uh, Indian Health Service for 24 years. I'm the acting uh, deputy EO at this time. Um, so I'll give the first thing was the field clinic updates. Um, so we opened up Data Wash on April 25th. Pine Point will open June 14th, Tuesdays and Thursdays for um, Rice Lake. That was planned to open in July, but um, that's going to be um, opening August 4th. And, uh, and that will be on Thursdays. Okay. Key leadership uh, vacancies. So the Deputy Chief Executive Officer and the Clinical Services Administrator. Uh, which are both positions are being uh, carried out through detail. I'm sorry, you've got to talk into that. Okay. I understand. I'm just going to put my paper is shaking. Okay. Um, clinical uh, mission critical vacancies. Vacancies for positions and dentists are long standing. Uh, recruitment efforts for providers and dentists need to be top priority. We are about to reward um, a contract to reposition recruiting, recruiting firms. Um, the PRC program continues to be severely short staffed. Staff are struggling with the number of referrals, which tend to be around um, like 150 referrals a week, uh, coming through with um, the number of purchase orders that go along with that um, to be issued for payments. Um, the routine referrals are taking up to um, two weeks to uh, process. Our laboratory is also short staffed due to inability to fill big uh, positions. We will be uh, pursuing a contract for lab uh, technician services. The next thing she has here is accreditation preparedness. So the Accreditation Association for Ambulatory Healthcare, which is the AAAHC, is the acronym for that, and that is our accrediting body, um, is scheduled for the third week of May, and I believe it's the 18th and 19th they'll be there to do survey. Um, accreditation affects IHS's um, dedication to high quality patient health care. And as accredited, as accredited organization, we become part of an elite force of organizations and prioritize quality for patients and staff. Accreditation is distinguishing accomplishment and important for the community we serve. The wider uh, health <clears throat> service unit has been accredited by HHC since 2010. Prior to 2010, wider service unit was accredited by the Joint Commission uh, for decades. Um, next on here is the um, monoclonal IV therapy. So the infusion therapy services continue to be available through the wider uh, tribal health department to treat severe COVID-19 symptoms for patients in high-risk health categories. In summary, the IHS uh, pharmacy procures the medication. The IHS provider um, assesses the patient and will order the medication based on CDC guidelines. The IHS pharmacy will prepare the medication for the wider tribal health representative 
to sign and pick up on behalf of the patient. The Board of Tribal Health will then uh, reconstitute the medication per FDA drug sheet specifications and complete the infusion at the White Earth Tribal Health Facility. Uh, purchase referred care, as noted, uh, PRC staff are struggling with the numbers of referrals coming in um, and the purchase orders that go out uh, for payment for those. For this, we apologize and we are trying very hard to keep up. Routine referrals are taking, like I said, up to uh, two weeks. Uh, there remains no change in regard to the company IHS contracts with to pay PRC services nationally. So that was our the IHS fiscal intermediary. I deal with that like daily, like that I have phone calls and I um, go through and uh, follow up on, on purchase orders that are not paying or the reason why or whatever. But um, right now they have um, shared with us that they're 90 days out on processing payments for um, purchase orders. So most often um, the purchase orders have left Indian Health or like the wider service unit to the uh, vendors and that's kind of where it sits. So we do a lot of rework with the calls, but that's that's fine. We appreciate some people following up on those if you can get bills in the mail. Um, and this is a nationwide issue for um, IHS and tribes. But patients are encouraged to contact um, Maria uh, directly if you have issues or questions about referrals or bills that you receive. Um, executive leadership meets with, uh, oh, this is in regard now to um, the tribal interactions. DLT meets with uh, White Earth Tribal Health Programs weekly and Behavior Health Programs monthly, which has resulted in a fine partnership that has resulted in an MOA for IHS services to provide a service in, Red, in Rice Lake monoclonal infusion therapy services for the community, planning for offering more services for weight management and uh, wider knowing the most successful programs are multidisciplinary programs in the community, especially nutrition, fitness and behavior health. Also, uh, Dr. Noisy Hawk has implemented uh, medical emergency scenario trainings for um, the wider service unit providers and nurses um, through using uh, the tribal EMS director. And that's all I have. Any questions, Any questions? for? Um, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Um, you went, you said um, deputy chief executive and clinical service administrator of which both positions are being carried out through detailed personnel. Can you, um, Kind of explain that to the people that are here, what is detailed personnel? Okay, so that would be like what I am I am doing right now. So I'm acting, um, I would be acting right under um, Maria. And um, with that, and then the clinical services administrator oversees the um, lab, uh, PTOT, radiology, um, pharmacy, all of those other clinical services that so Dr. Noisy Hawk, that's kind of like how the org chart goes, um, which has recently been updated as well. Um, so it would be like Dr. Noisy Hawk oversees like the, the physicians and the dental, that kind of thing. And then the clinical services does lab radiology, physical therapy, and pharmacy. Okay. And so they'll they're, they're po they'll be posted. Okay. So this the acting in um. So the chief executive officer used to be what Laura was, and now she has accepted position at the area. So that will in that 120 days that I'm in this, it'll be posted for people to apply for it. Okay. And then another question on. You know, I get a lot of complaints from our members and also um, people offer us that, you know, come to White Earth for their care. Um, one is our elders are not being seen in person. 
um, one call for two weeks. Couldn't get in. They want to do a phone call. She told them she's not feeling right. She wants to be seen. Call back tomorrow. Then the team called her and said, well, we can do a phone call. No, you know, she said, I, I know I'm not feeling right. I want to be seen. Mm -hmm. Well, within that, the end of that two weeks, she had a heart attack. Now, where is the patient care there? Another one had emailed me and she was transferring to Whiter. She went in and I won't say who she's seen. She's seen, a, a, it was a nurse practitioner and she even called uh, medical records before she went and they said they got all her information. She's been on these meds for years. And she said, basically the um, practitioner told her, well, you know, I got over 600 patients. I don't have time and we didn't even get your records. I mean, I got that on my phone yet, what she told me. And you know, to me, our elders at least need to be seen in person. You know, even them with um, stomach problems or whatever, if, you know, this is my thing. If white can't find out what's going on with that person, don't wait two years to refer them out. I had an uncle that, you know, did that for two years, but these are the concerns I'm getting, you know, and people can't get in. You can't get through to Maria, so how are you supposed to tell her your concerns? You know, and I'm sorry, Leanne, I know Maria should be here, but I think that, you know, it's time if Mr. Chairman would request a meeting with IHS in the evening, let the people come in, have IHS come in, and, you know, let the people ask questions. Because I get bombarded weekly with questions and I don't get answers out there, mm -hmm. you know, from anybody. I even left you a message once and you never call me back. Maria, I can email her and she will email, email me back once in a while, but it's like, you know, as a tribal leader, I'm here for these people and I need to know what's going on because they're not getting the care they deserve, none of them. So, you know, that's something that concerns me. Mm -hmm. And you know, yes, I have worked at IHS for 16 years, so I know what goes on in there. So, you know, nobody can pull the wool over my eyes. But my main concern was always patient care. And you can ask any one of the people I work for, that was always my main concern. They come in on emergency, I'd roll them right back. Yeah, I'd get slack from the nurses, but you know, what the heck? I ain't gonna let somebody die while I'm sitting here at the, you know, desk. So that's something that IHS has to look at, you know. We're here for patient care. Let's give our people patient care. Miigwech. Yeah, our elders are um, trying to get in to the doctors, someone, and we had one elder that had a three, had three uh, providers in six months. It kept having to change providers because it's the, Providers leave. What the hell's going on down there? We, you know, we need good care. And dental, should I been going to Monoman paying for my own for five years because I couldn't get in there. Two years, I I tried. I honestly tried. Every time I called, they'd say we don't have an appointment, and I'd say, okay, put me on the list. We can't do that because we're booked out for three months. Never got on that list. I had to go by my own insurance. That's not okay, you know. We are part of Indian Health Service where we're eligible and should receive services there. We have elders that go down there to get medicines and they they got this 28 day policy fine but a weekend comes up or holidays and they will not give them any more than 28 days i don't know if the people are rich or you can drive all over and come back every day to get medicines you can't do that look at the price of gas today i mean and then others are getting their taxes taken. They're depending on those taxes for something. They planned on that, getting them back. Instead, they're taking because their bills aren't being paid. 
There are a lot of problems, and I'm not afraid to say it. We have so many problems with Indian Health Service. Can't get into PT. You know, they're booked forever, too. People come out of surgeries, they need immediate care to help with those, with the uh, recovery. So, you know, we need to get that meeting going. We need to get something happening because we are losing our elders left and right. Thank you. And the provider. You want to say anything? No. Anybody else? Uh, I'm here. Yeah, it is on. Now, Caslake has a really good um, way of dealing with their dental. They have like first come, first serve um, in the morning, right from the beginning. So I've, I've traveled all the way to Cass Lake, but I thought, why can't we do that with our, with our dental? It's nice because it's just like a, two hours, it's open just for walking. You know, I one time went to the wire I IHS and I had a toothache and they told me I could sit and wait and after two hours of waiting, they told me that they wouldn't be able to fit me in. But if we could set something up like Cass Lake, that would be great if we're walking, even with the doctors. Are you taking those notes? Yeah, I'd just like to know, What's taking so long with that Brain State Clinic? It's been two years now. It's supposed to open in May of, what is it, 2020, but because of the pandemic, it closed down. So then they said it would open in May of 2021. Nothing happened. In July, they said, I mean, we planned three grand openings already, and I've already had to cancel three of them. And now you're telling me August 4th? It's been ready for two years. What? What's the holdup? I mean, I... People up there are just getting so sick of it. I mean, like, even our elders. We can't even go to our own clinic. You've been telling us it's going to be open. It's going to be open. Now. I don't know. I said, I've got to deal with IHS. I don't know what their problem is. I, and so I'm very upset with our IHS because the clinic's been ready for two years. And we still haven't gotten it. And now you're telling me August 4th, I told next, it'll be, what, November sometime? I mean, come on. It's been ready for two years. I don't understand what's taking so long, but the people are losing faith in IHS, something terrible. Oh, yeah. I mean, look at IHS, my yeah. sister was, was she went there for months complaining there was something wrong. And she said, Nita got to a point where I felt like they were just rolling their eyes, like, like I was making something up. She had to go somewhere else to be diagnosed with cancer. And by then she was stage four. And she's not the only person that was misdiagnosed that died of cancer. To speak, I'm Remy Rowney. I'm the director of nursing at um, White Earth IHS. And I have been there this August for these three years. Um, and to answer to the Rice Lake uh, Clinic opening and why it's been delayed several times, uh, the majority of it is due to uh, COVID, as we've all experienced just joys that have come along with COVID in the last two years. Um, we have to be able to operate safely and efficiently with staffing um, and how to operate in a field clinic. That's a smaller version um, of how we were operating out of wire. So we're just navigating through that, um, making sure we have an appropriate provider and nursing staff to be out there that are detailed to that particular clinic. Um, as everybody is well aware, we're very short of staff, um, providers included, physicians um, and dentists on top of nursing staff as well. Um, thankfully, things have started to turn. Um, just <coughs> historically, every time we were getting ready to do um, openings in the field clinics, we ended up with a surge. So then within, honestly, it was, Within hours, we had a meeting um, in regards to how we were gonna disperse and start um, getting back to what normal would be for our operations, um, seeing sick with the well. And within hours, we got um, action from the area office that we need to gear up for a search and we need to um, stay as we were uh, for structure within 
our staffing. Um, so then at that, field clinics were not able to open. So um, it, I am sure as patients feel frustrated, we do as well with the staff because we do want to serve um, very high quality care and collaborate um, as well with the tribe. And, and we have seen some beautiful things happening. Um, however, there's always, always room for improvement on uh, business and customer care, um, which obviously we'll continue to strive for. We have a lot of room um, to grow and learn from without a doubt. And I think I speak for myself on behalf of um, the majority of the wider staff. I'm happy um, to take concerns and complaints anytime. Please call me directly. Um, and I am pretty adamant to see something get done about it. I think um, several can speak to that. Um, and I'm happy. I'm in my role to make positive changes and improve the overall care of our patients that we serve. I'm one of them. My family is um, also served by IHS. I've grown up in IHS my whole life. Um, and so my job literally has been my dream job since I started my nursing career, and I'm living it um, for the improvement of what I can bring um, myself to IHS. I'm one, um, but I have really um, <laughs> I have um, very high ambitions and goal sets along with um, several of the ELT members um, that we serve. We've taken a long time to get in our groove um, as ELT staff. I would say leadership is because of turnover, like those acting positions where you're detailed, um, that puts constraints on moving forward. Every time we're in our groove and we're ready to get going, we would lose a very significant member of our staff um, for implementation and change. Um, they get detailed to the area or somewhere else within IHS, which is um, difficult to navigate through um, because then strategically you kind of start over from scratch each time somebody new is coming in into the ELT. Um, but we are very aware and needing to hear um, the concerns and frustrations and barriers that our patients are experiencing, all patients, elders, um, families, everybody um, from brand new all the way up. When you're hearing or working through um, those barriers, we are here to serve the patients and we do want to do it well. Um, and again, I open myself up to any um, conflict resolution complaints, I'm willing to take them at any um, point of my day. I have an open door policy, um, and I promptly answer my voicemails and phone um, within a day, usually same day. And I thank you for your concern, but again, as elders, when we call into the clinic and ask, try to get an appointment, they, they say, we, we're full. So they tell you, call in at 7.30. You can't get through to anybody at 7.30. By 8 o'clock, when you call in, they say, we're booked. Sorry. So our patients are out there. They're dying. But you're not, elder can't wait two years to be served. And, you know, he don't take care of them. Here's one of my big concern is the uh, provider turnover down there. I mean, we've yeah, had some that's... we've had some great doctors come in there, but I know for a fact they were chased out by admin and the commission court. Now, to me, if you're not a doctor, you don't sit there and tell this doctor how to do his practice. One of them would go for home visits. <clears throat> I mean, that 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 was just him, and he got reprimanded for that. And that isn't right. If he cares that much about our patient that he wants to be there and, you know, get to know him and stuff, then let him do it. I mean, salary, whatever, I don't care. But he had that big heart to go out there to see his patients. And he would sit there with them and, you know, do whatever. But that's the kind of doctors we need. You know, these nurse practitioners, that's just what they are. They're not doctors. I'm sorry. And the one that's seen this 
woman here from she's not even but she's enrolled here but she don't live here but she thought she was gonna come get some proper care well I mean, just to tell her, well, I ain't got your records and I can't prescribe that. She said, I'm not, no, you know, I'm not looking for drugs. She said, I want my meds that I've been on for 20 some years, you know, and she didn't get them. I mean, now why didn't, and then to, for the nurse practitioner to say, do you know I have 600 patients? I mean, what's that got to do with this one patient sitting in front of you? You know, I she should be focusing on this person. And I, some of them doctors down there are just there for the money. The Commission Corps ones, I, I'll say this straight up, they're there, but they're there for themselves. I have seen them. Others can't sit on the computer and order things. Oh, look at, we need this new uniform. We need this, you know. All the ones that aren't are out there working their butts off, you know, and then who gets the credit? Commission Corps, because Oh, they, they have to rank up. Well, what about our patient care? You know, I've seen that several times. And there's one nurse practitioner that she uses that to the core, you know, and that's not right for our patients because that ain't giving our patients proper care. When I first started down there, though, doctors were good. They seeing patients every 15 minutes. And I know that's not a long enough time, but they did it. And they even d took double books. They, I mean, some of them worked till eight o'clock at night going through their charts. That ain't happening no more. You know, it's like the patient care just isn't there. They're not there for the patients. Well, that's what we're saying, Annie, that there's a problem in administration oh, that needs to be corrected. I also worked at that clinic for 31 years. So, you know, we're not here to always complain. When we have concerns and, and there's others that are saying them, then, then we need to have answers. Indian Health Service hasn't been here to even report with us. We do it every month. And, you know, where are they? Where's Maria? Or Dr. Noisyhoff? Why can't they be here and answer? some of these questions. You know, anybody that you've got here that are making excuses or whatever for, for those in, in charge, bring, in, bring these issues back to us because we want answers. And um, Mike, I think we should have a meeting immediately, you know, because there is a big concern. We've had several people die, and especially our elders are hurting. Especially when they don't want to give you your medication because you went 26 days instead of 28. That's crazy. Well, even why 28 days? How many days in a month other than February yeah. have 28 days? Yeah, that's Why crazy. do they give 28 days? Because they're going by four times seven. I mean, a month isn't four times seven. I mean, I, I run into that problem. And then if you go on a weekend, then you're missing your medication until for two or three days. And it's happened so many times. Well, you know, I've been requesting a meeting with the higher ups, not Bemidji, but it's falling on deaf ears. So that's why I asked Mr. Chairman that maybe he needs to ask for this. You know, I don't care if it's with white or staff, whoever at this point, you know, but you guys need to be heard. Everybody needs to be heard. Because yeah. it, it's it's hurting our people. Trying to build it up and down, 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 down. Um, <clears throat> I would like to express concern about the PRC. Um, two years ago. I had credit well enough to walk into a car dealership and walk out with a new vehicle without a down payment. Today, due to medical bills being unpaid by IHS, um, I'm unable to even get a high interest credit card. Um, <clears throat> I know you have one good staff back there, Tiny, and I'd like to acknowledge her for the work that she does. But <clears throat> there's several other people there that I've talked to that I give them the bills over and over and over, and they're still not being paid. Um, so that's a big concern. I worked hard for my credit. Um, so what I'll, what I'll do, I'm gonna get your um, 
keep a number and I'll call you back on both. Yeah, because I'm not even enough. seeing yeah. a specialist. I'm supposed to see a specialist um, every three months. And I'm not even doing that anymore because I can't afford more medical bills. Yeah. Just with the with the referral, with the NIHS referral and um, Indian Health Care Improvement Act, that's where the vendors don't, they'll bill you. I mean, if we then turn around and call them and let them know that with the IHS um, referral, they're, they're unable to balance bills. But that, okay. I can't control that part on, this, on the vendor side of it. But um, so how I work through those um, normally is, if you, if you end up with one of those uh, collection letters, you'll have to call there to, to authorize myself to speak to them. And they'll start talking to me. And then I let them know that there's no validity in that charge for the credit, and it needs to be removed. So there's ways to work through those and get that um, cleaned up. So I'll have uh, Ramey take care. Thank you. Um, another thing I also want to comment on is patient care. Um, a year ago, my hubby had a heart attack and he was supposed to be referred to a dietitian. That referral was made, a dietitian never contacted him. Um, three weeks later, he had a second heart attack, so he had two more stints put in. Um, was referred, expressed um, the need, absolute need for a dietitian. We still haven't gotten a call from that dietitian. Do you know what um, vendor or hospital that was? Sanford. <coughs> Um, and I agree, you guys can't keep a doctor to save lives. And every doctor that I've talked to regarding this, Reiner, other doctors that were familiar with us as a people, our disparities, they all said it was administration. Thank you. Excuse me, I have a question for you, Leah. Yep. So what happens when IHS does not pay a bill within a year? Because, and I honestly believe billing is further behind than 90 days. Yeah, right. I know bill, there's bills that have remained out there for years, and just like Tito said, like Mary said, those impact our people's credit. They're not able to rent housing. They're not able to get loans. There's multiple. And I do want to thank you for being here and understanding that you know, this isn't doesn't all fall on you or your responsibility, but you know, it is my responsibility. I mean, I, I, and I you gotta take the, the full load of all of them. I'm one person so, for being here, you know, but it is an ongoing issue and concern and, you know, um, Mary's one So with that, um, you know, PRC is just a complex uh, program. I mean, there's, there's a lot of um, education things, things to wait, you know, learn how to navigate through it. And I, and I completely understand everybody's frustration. I mean, I, I'm frustrated that I feel like I do the work and then it, it lands somewhere else and then I'm redoing it because someone else did the next step. As far as like Stanford is concerned. But we've also gotten, you know, um, we have a good um, billing team now. Stanford has a nice billing team that just works for our purchase orders. So um, I have a good relationship with them. So they're very responsive when I contact them about certain, you know, purchase orders that come to. With that said, being um, really short staff, when you're saying, you know, all of the care that goes out, and you know, I have three staff right now for all of Indian Health Service and our, you know, the population that we serve. It's it's huge. And there's there's the referral side, and then there's the the money side of it. It's two different things, and it's it's just a very huge workload. And we just it's hard to recruit for that position. That people just are not applying. You know, and um, and I struggle with that part, but um, I take a lot of pride in, in PRC and what, you know, we do there. Um, they're early, I stay late. I'm constantly working with all of those things. And like I said, I'm just one person that I can't, 
not enough hours in the day to solve every single problem. Like, I do my best. So. One of the comments that I would like to make, um, just listening to the, the concerns that everyone has, including the staff that's representing IHS today, is that anytime you have high turnover and the unresolved complaints to make a business operate better, directly goes back to leadership or lack of. And so, you know, that's when you're asking for a meeting um, with Bemidji, I, I hope you um, follow through with that, Chairman Fairbanks, because certainly Maria should be here today and Dr. Noisy Hawk. Not um, Maria, no, she, she, she was unable to attend today. But she always, um, I think well, she needs to attend along with Dr. All right, so aside, I will let them know that. Yes, and aside from that, the other thing um, that I would think would be a, a, a pretty simple thing to do during the interim of this, just to um, help the patients that are trying to seek services, is if you could um, do something with marketing, um, whether it's ads on the radio, whether it's news, you know, ads in the Anishinaabe today, that outline the processes that you have in place for us to learn and, and know what we're supposed to do in those situations. As you mentioned, you know, everything about IHS seems to be pretty complicated in the way things work and how things are funded. And for those of us that get caught up in that, that web of um, the bills not being paid and everything, um, we often don't know what to do. We don't know who to go to. We don't know what we should expect. We don't know what we should bring in. Um, so I think that just some marketing tools um, to just provide um, accurate information on how we could do things to um, get good results for everybody because it really is confusing when you get caught up in there. Um, you bring your stuff in and you get another bill from Essentia, you bring it in, you know, six months later, you're still bringing in the same bill. And, and um, I personally believe that some of those organizations are part of the problem because sometimes those bills are like $3.81. And then they start calling and hounding and it's like, um, you try to explain to the essential worker in billing that, you know, you shouldn't be sending me this bill. This bill should be going to IHS, whatever. Um, so again, just if you're able to um, inform the people of processes that we should be using to um, yeah. try to get good results. That's a good idea. Thank you. But I know too, when Maria was at one of our meetings, she stated that, you know, there's a law out there that, you know, our bills, should it be sent to collect, collection but aid? Yeah, but they do. And then and then we turn around and have to send them that letter with that has the regulation. It's they need help there. They're on your credit report though. Yeah, but the, but there's no validity to it then, Annie. Yeah, but and then you have to go through the whole rigmarole to get it. You know, I know, and that's there. But how do I? And that's the part that I struggle with is that I can't control that. And you know but that in those like, bigger agencies that you know. Like I know for um, like for as far as essential goes, you know the the billing and the people that are calling our patients for those bills, they're out of Duluth. They're not even the ones that we talk to every day. You know that do our IHS billing. They're out of Duluth, and then when you call them, and um, the patients will call the number on the bill, and then they're like, all they know is purchase order. And then if they don't see something with about a purchase order, then they don't want to hear anything else. And then I'm like, wow. So it makes it look like I'm not telling the truth when I'm saying, well, we have purchase orders out there and we sent them. I have record of everything that we send them. We scan them. There's, there's email record of when we've sent those purchase orders to them. You know, it's them attaching, but those two Essentia as well, they, they haven't had turnover in a few years. Neither has Sanford, but I, I went through that um, as far as those, the billers, once they learn, they leave, 
and then the next one's coming in they're not properly trained how to work with our with our stuff but um i must agree with mary you know timing while pauline keezer has been a godsend i mean you know she's the only one i can really talk to down there and she and you know every since bernice you know god bless her soul yeah. you know it's, she was my number one and her and yeah, that's that's the one so i've her position's been open for two years i've been unable to fill it but i do it's, not want to see pauline bombarded either <laughs> but you know she is awesome <laughs> i just want to all three all of them are i just want to say one more thing if um uh, Something certainly has to be changed because once those bills get into a collection agency and sent to the tax people, they're gone because it ruins their credit right there. And you can't get the money back. There's no damn way. That's the IRS. So, you know, what we're saying is help us before it gets to that point. And, it, you know, we recommended in the past that they look at people that do have insurance. So, you know, you may end up with just a, a smaller bill for for those people, but they still go to a collection agency when when there's a smaller bill and it's not paid. And, you know, it's ruined, it, ruined the credit. Their taxes again are gone for something they might have wanted to use, maybe a car, maybe, you know, kids is closed for God's sake. Anyway, something has to change and happen to deal with these issues. I agree. Any other questions? Comments? Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll do Anna's report and then we'll take a break. <laughs> Tribal college. <laughs> Two minutes. Two minutes. Two minutes. Jeez, I'm going to go fast. <laughs> okay. Um, good morning. Thank you, Chairman Fairbanks and members of the tribal. Um, um, I brought with me Provost Laura Driscoll and also our facilities um, manager, Paula Hampton. So, so we're going to come here, but first I want to just give you provide some updates and then we'll talk about why we brought them here. Um, we have a graduation that's going to be occurring next week, Thursday, May 12, starting at 2 p.m. So if you can make it, that would be great to support our graduates. We also applied to a Blanded Foundation grant to build our bookstore digital front. So I just want to remind people that we do sell um, beadwork in our stores. So hopefully if we get this grant, we'll be able to do that online. So that way you can still look at stuff and get them sent directly right to your house. So we know that's a need um, because we keep hearing it from our students and different community members. Um, next week, we have the Higher Learning Commission. They'll be um, at our campus. Um, this is for college accreditation, so we are preparing for that. So we came over here, um, taking time away from that. Um, our student senate has been very active. They organized the highway cleanup. Um, they had the adopted section of the highway, so they just did that last week. So if you look on our Facebook page, you'll see pictures of them um, doing that. So I think it took them entire morning to clean, I think it was two miles section that they had. They also organized the Indian taco sale, so they wanted me to make sure that we thank the community who came out and supported them. And I think they cleared a little over $1,000 on that, so they were super excited about that. Um, for some of them, that was their first time being a part of a fundraising event, so they learned a lot of leadership skills about that one. So, 
But we are here today to ask for a request from you to help us um, build a trades program building. And so that's been a need that has been shared with us. And we did a one year preservation committee survey in spring of 2020. Um, the top thing that came back is that we need some help in the trades area. And that's um, over and over, we kept hearing it in all the different villages. Um, we also talked with RBC executive leadership and they've been sharing the same concerns that, you know, we need to have some training, you know, with construction, maybe some HVAC, electrical, plumbing. And then also a program that we work with quite extensively right now is our solar program. So we're looking at tying this one in also. Um, so that's what we're here for. And I'm gonna bring it over to Laura Driscoll to talk more about what this program entails. Good morning. So we've been working with a professor from Pine Tech College in Southern Minnesota. He's had a very successful program where um, students come in and they start with construction, but they also get experience with plumbing and electrical and um, HVAC. Yes, so those are the four. We also have asked him to, to add in solar since that's such an important um, component to the reservation. Uh, he's had a lot of success with this program because students are able to get into the program to start and then try out a few different fields. So that they don't start in a you know, plumbing program and find out when they graduate plumbing it's really not anything they're interested in. So you get a taste of a little bit of different things and uh, get to choose what program they actually want. Um, Dr. Manz is willing to come up and work with the college and help us uh, set up the program. He already has an equipment list established. He has curriculum established. Um, one important part of this program is internships. And so we would be looking at industries in the, on the reservation where students could get some hands-on experience. The challenge we have is we do not have a facility that is conducive to this type of program. So I'm gonna let Paul talk about what kind of building we would need. Morning. Um, I took the liberty all last fall to have our tech to do up a rendering. I believe you might have that rendering in your packet. But uh, the building that they proposed was about a 13,000 square foot building, be a Holborn type building. Um, two thirds would be used for the uh, classrooms. Um, a third of it we would utilize for storage for the college equipment, extension equipment because we are running out of storage room with the equipment that we've been acquiring through equipment grants. Uh, the building would be versatile for the HVAC, the electrical, carpentry, whatever other trades we run through. Like uh, Anna said, we do have a curriculum a template from Pine Tech Community College. I just glancing at it this morning, this is the first glance I have at it. Looks pretty interesting. I think we get a lot of a lot of people from the area taking these classes and getting certified for internships and getting on with local contractors, even <coughs> non local contractors. But I know the workforce isn't as strong as it used to be. Well, I don't have any questions, um, but I have a question for you. The building that you're proposing, you said it's a pole barn, is that correct? Pole barn type building, yes. Okay. Um, and I haven't seen the building, but just based on that, it goes back to the same thing that I, I've talked about for years that if White Earth really wants to be energy independent, everybody needs to get on the same page 
to construct buildings and structures so that when we get our community solar gardens and all of the things set up that, that hopefully we will, that those buildings are conducive to truly be net zero buildings where they don't cost anything to heat, cool, and for electricity. So my question to you is the building that you have proposed, does it meet those conditions that it could be a net zero building? We haven't gotten into the design and development of the building, but it certainly would be. As Anna and uh, Laura have said, they've been, we've been working with our real and they're proposing a solar garden right across the road from our campus. And uh, I think you know more about yep. that. And so they are writing a grant right now, our real with the state, uh, or not state, the city of Monoman. And so we have written a letter of support with that one. So if they are granted that one, they will supply all the energy to our college at a very reduced rate. And so potentially our entire campus will be, you know, um, run by solar energy. So we're excited about what that. Our um, extension building right now is 100% paid by solar energy. So if you drive our campus, you probably see some of those solar pieces. And so, um, which is awesome and great for that one. So I would love to, you know, move towards that one. And so that is something that we looked at too, is, you know, we want to have some discussions of possibly putting this up on our roof. I know um, they don't like to do that one, but if, you know, we'll have enough space with what we're proposing that we should be able to put some of that up there because we know eventually, you know, space will become a hot commodity, especially on a campus when we're kind of locked in in a very small location there. In addition to what you're saying, again, I must not be making my point clear. If you plan your buildings and design them to be truly net zero buildings, you don't have a heating, cooling, or electricity bill. And when you're talking about not having these electricity bills, that is wonderful. But why don't we go that one step further to design and build those buildings so that the overhead to keep them operational doesn't cost us anything? And that's the point that I keep trying to make, that everybody that's um, thinking about building a, a new structure needs to gather that lighter actually can be energy independent at some point. Um, and so, again, I, I encourage um, a comprehensive plan to be put together for all of the new construction that I used to um, be putting up all over. And I encourage you to, I, I would love to come and visit with you about that building and um, just share with you what, what the construction firm I work with can do to actually um, design a building so that you don't have heating, cooling, or electrical costs. So that's, I just wanted to point that out, that we all need to get on the same page if White Earth ever truly is going to be energy independent. Now, Chairman Fairbanks, you had a question or a comment? Oh, well, just about uh, the courses or the, you know, for the uh, energy program or plumbing program, is that gonna be a certificate program? Yep, it'll be a two-year AAS program. If you look in the back of your packet, um, that's an example of who we're working with, um, with Pintex. So they've um, agreed to share their entire curriculum with us, and so we'll tailor it to meet our needs, but this will give you a baseline of you know what it would entail, you know, how long it would go through. And like we talked about, there's gonna be five touch points where the students will be able to, you know, look at each of those areas and from those classes determine you know what they're passionate about because that's what you want to pursue you know for your career and so then we'll tailor the rest of the program and their internship for that yes I do have a, a comment piggybacking off of what you had said um, I'm alumni of the of the tribal college and um, Continuing with the with the sciences, that's one thing I wondered why White Earth hasn't pursued it to looking into it is like um, ge geothermal heating in a lot of their units, especially like some of the um, units where there's there's multiple, um, like with the um, 
like an apartment complex or, or with um, <coughs> congregate and, and things like that. And so then the interior would stay at around 50 some degrees and you'd only be heating or cooling the difference. And that would cut back on a lot of the energy costs. Um, and that's something I think we should take into consideration for future construction projects for light. Our campus is uh, two thirds geothermal. Yeah. So we took that into consideration on the first two phases. For future phases, we couldn't drill wells for the third phase. Okay. Can we um, like have something like that? You know, installing that, whatever, for geothermal in the. In the courses? Yeah. Oh, certainly. Because, you know, I know it's quite spendy to do, but, you know, that'd be great if our own people could do it. No? Yeah, it would just be getting in a company to train pretty much well drilling. But, yeah. You know. Yeah. I know my friend has that, and she loves it. So, yeah. I'm all in for cost-saving measures. Yeah, so. me too. <laughs> But yeah, like I said, we came here just to ask for your support. Uh, like, like we said, we have just the initial drawings. We don't have any details on this one. Just, just kind of lets you look at what it would look like, how it would help us, um, and so that's why we're here today. We're asking you to help us, you know, go forward with this project from very basics to hiding the architecture, you know, to getting that bit out to actually get them constructed. So we talked and, you know, without those hard numbers in front of us, we're predicting it's going to cost anywhere from three and a half to six million dollars. So that's what we're asking for your support today. Cost of building material and everything else is going up. The sooner you get your numbers, the better. Yep. And it's Sorry, I'm lost. Because a trade building for to tra trade well, our people they in want to trades. Us. They just come to run this by us, and that's that. Is no, that they a question or something. Well, they're giving what? an update, but they're also um, telling us what they're looking for for the future of the tribal college, and that's adding a trades building right. to learn carpentry okay. and plumbing and all that. All right. So, yeah. That's that today until we get the plan. But like without the hard numbers, I think it's hard for us to really, you know. Oh, and that's where we would ask you this to yeah. help us with paying for the architecture just to get that first initial drawing. We know there's going to be some cost in that one. So that's something you guys can do. Quickly move forward and oh, come back and present that information. Can I? Ask the question. Uh, here, ARPA funding, does it cover any of it? <laughs> no, not for this one, since this, this would be a brand new program. And so right now, ARPA funding does not allow for any construction. There is a proposal on the, on the horizon with um, Department of Education that they're going to allow construction, um, but they're very limited on what we can do with COVID. So that's probably going to be with some of the items on um, phase four, and so one of those pieces that we're looking at is like a wellness um, um, exercise area, you know, to help with mental health. So that sounds like something that they would fund. And then to the I just, with our ARPA funding that we got, the big people, they just were really um, adamant and very open to us using it on any kind of education related expenditures. So I was, that's why I was kind of thrown back that they wouldn't allow this. It just seems like it would be right up out the alley for it, you know. So it sounds like you have like a need, immediate need to discuss something with our architect or design, is what yes. you're saying. We, could we at Mike? Could we ask her to talk with Lisa? Is you guys use that, the mic so we can hear you. Well, they need a proposal. You got to get us a proposal. Yeah, so right, I'm saying you know, if you, you could, something, but we, we got to go through Lisa anyway. Like an official proposal. Yeah. 
proposal, what you're requesting. Okay, because I did work with Lisa. She just said to come here and talk with you guys. Oh, okay. And right. this is what she suggested that I do. But we so. need a proposal. Mr. Chair, if I may. Good. I just wanted to do a little bit of background information too. Um, so our elders had come forward with concerns about having electricians, the plumbers, the carpentry. We had concerns regarding the housing and housing being able to get the houses that were in our communities that needed work. And then we also, um, we met with, Curtis and I met with Dennis and we talked about what could potentially um, help our people in the training and trades schooling area. So we had several meetings um, you know, with the college to come up with how are we gonna train our own people and have them cross train so they're not just identified to one category. But this concept, this idea came from you all in the community and our elders and housing, the concerns with housing. And um, I believe it was uh, um, Mr. Leonard Thompson and and Todd Thompson that had presented some ideas about hiring our people up, training them across the board. So then we start uh, networking internally to try to get these efforts to be brought forward into an idea. And it was, it's my understanding that, you know, the information presented to our leaders today, do we continue to move on with this concept? Do we support this concept? And if so, um, uh, Anna had just mentioned that the needs for the architect and, and funding for that to, to move forward. We can look at other additional funding resources or see if there's any grant opportunities for this, but that is like the history of how we're getting to where we're at with the presentation today. So, which thank you for sharing that. Are we gonna include the Amish to come train? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll make a motion to go ahead and move forward with the architect part of it. Well, we need a proposal first, Annie. We oh, Annie. we need a proposal in a... Yeah. Oh. Your proposal. I don't think you need to do a motion. You know, I think you can just give them the... Oh, but, the, the, but the architect is going to cost money. Yeah. And that's what, well, that's, that's what they're need to solicit, is my understanding. So if we oh, can have the price of that brought yes, forward in yeah, a resolution, yeah. is that what? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But if, if council says yes, can by consent, only the group at the college can go and solicit an architect and then come back and say, oh, it's just kind of give us an idea. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. But we still got to pay. Okay. We may or may not. Yeah. Yeah, but the architect is. But no, I, I like what I heard. I think yeah. uh, a lot of the community members have talked about for years, needs for trades in the community, you know, in the villages and for our small business owners, um, especially in the area. Um, a lot of our folks are having issues uh, finding people qualified to do the jobs, right? And so that's affecting and hurting everyone out here. And, um, I don't know. Just the fact that, you know, I know with this Elders Commission that's coming down the line, you're going to start to identify a lot of these areas and the, some of these homes, right, that need assistance, whether it's electrical or plumbing or, or anything like that. And if we have more people available to do it, because right now I think there's only like a couple people in the area that actually do it. And, you know, they charge a lot of money. Um, so be nice to have tribal members be able to, to do that sort of work. So be in support of moving forward to get that information from you guys. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you, Anna. It, it, like we all said, we're all in support of it. Just want to do it the right way and make sure that we're using our resources in a good way. I was just talking to Tracy about, I'm you know, sitting down with you and too, talking about other options and other things that we can, how, how we can collaborate as a, as a, as a tribal council nation to help our tribal college, so. Perfect, I would enjoy that. So, if, if I understood it, we have the option to go forward and get those quotes with the architect yes. and bring it back to you. Yes, okay. you can do that. Which? I want to break, take a break, 10 minutes. Council members are present. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. 